Hello guys, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this particular video, we are going to talk about some of the patterns and decisions we make uh, within an organization. So when we are using AWS, uh, when we set up our new AWS account, one of the things which we one of the thing which we need to decide is whether we are going with single AWS account or multiple AWS accounts, and also within that how are we keeping our vpcs whether we are going to have a single vpc or multiple uh, this particular uh, decision is important because it decides a lot of things as you move forward with the usage of aws so i'm going to talk about some of the factors and based on this you can go ahead and actually decide that what would be good for your organization okay so uh, as you can see I have noted down some of the important factors which people keep in mind while or which people consider while deciding this particular thing. The first, first particular, uh, fa first particular option where we say single VPC. So basically, your organization creates one AWS account and you have one VPC in that. This particular uh, option will go ahead, will choose or will go ahead with this option only when your workload is really less and you are probably just your organization is just getting started trying to get hold of what AWS is whether the you know what all services are available there they are not having a very long-term goal yet in such cases this particular option might work where you have just one AWS account you create a VPC put all the workloads all the type of uh, all the five six or ten systems which you are creating just within that VPC and you go ahead with it right uh, but if you are thinking long term of course this would not be a feasible thing at least you should go with single account multiple vpcs or multiple aws accounts with single or multiple vpcs okay so let me let me explain this further now the the some of the things which which actually uh, contribute to this decision are that how is the uh, you know how big is the usage uh, uh, you know uh, by various teams in your organization how many IT teams are there which are going to manage uh, let's say provisioning of instances uh, termination of instances any modification which is required how is your organization structured in terms of different departments or platforms or uh, you know multiple cost centers might be there now <clears throat> Think of an take an example of an enterprise. Let's uh, let's talk in that way. So there's an enterprise which has got multiple teams or let's say multiple departments within, right? It's a big organization, thousands of people working within within that organization. Now, uh, typically in such cases, what happens is uh, for every team inside that enterprise, they would have different needs. So let's say there might be a, a particular supply chain department. There might be an uh, there might be an, an uh, uh, a human resources department maybe right or, or some other stuff. Now these departments will have their own cost center or will have their own budget which they get to spend uh, during the financial year right. And hence it would make more sense that you create at least one AWS account for every department. So maybe let's say we can have one AWS, one AWS account which will be there for supply chain, one AWS account which will be there for HR and payroll department, let's say, and so on, right? So what's the benefit of that? The benefit is at every account level, you would be able to see that how much money they're spending. That's one thing. We can, of course, go within an account and, uh, and differentiate the cost as well. That's possible. But still, uh, in terms of... Uh, in terms of cost breakup, it's very easy at account level that you can see how much money has been spent by a particular account. Also, in addition to that, uh, let's say if your supply chain department has got its own IT staff, right? Uh, let's say three or four guys of DevOps team or AWS administrators who are there, they can set up their standards. They may choose how, how, how do they want to uh, name the security groups uh, or any other thing, let's say if they are using service catalog or if they are uh, 
defining a strategy of taking snapshots at regular, at regular intervals or things like that they will have full control within their account now, now why am i saying within their account because if you see typically the scope of im is up is is globally within an account right so if you go ahead and create an im user for one of the uh, uh, one of the aws admin that guy would be able to control the complete account which is there for this supply chain department right and hence he can set up the standards which everybody would follow in the supply chain department right and in the same way there would be another it admin or another aws admin who is taking care of the account of hr team and hence these two do not conflict in terms of uh, cost they do not conflict in terms of standards which they want to put and this would be the best thing now sometimes uh, you know sometimes this could be a bit uh, more in terms of maintenance because let's say if your organization has multiple uh, such departments uh, but uh, the it team is comparatively smaller you have fewer guys then it would become very difficult to to basically go ahead and create uh, uh, you know create a lot of accounts because then it will become more difficult for them to go ahead and do the repetitive task in every account in such cases the other approach could be if your it team is comparatively smaller one uh, and it's like let's say a, a couple of four or five guys who have to manage all the aws accounts then it might be a, a better approach where you go ahead and have uh, you know like in such cases you can go ahead and have maybe a single aws account itself but within that you will have different vpcs and uh, uh, and hence you will basically categorize that uh, which workload is running in which vpc you may go ahead and uh, let's say create a vpc for a particular application as well because uh, if you see, uh, you can go ahead and uh, uh, while you're writing IAM permissions, you can actually filter down, at least in case of EC2 VPC, EC2 VPC, etc., the permissions which you are writing, you can go ahead and basically restrict it to a particular VPC. That's possible, right? So maybe there's a particular restricted user that you can write the policy in such a way that that guy would be able to operate only inside VPC1 and he will not be able to do anything in VPC2. So, uh, depending on the fact that how big your IT team is, uh, how complex the, uh, the, the, the organization structure is, you may choose whether you want to keep one AWS account or multiple AWS account. In terms of costing, you can always consolidate all the N number of AWS accounts into one AWS account. Now, understand when we say consolidation, we are not actually merging them in terms of resources. It is only from the billing perspective that if you have account 1 to 10 and you go ahead and basically consolidate all of them to account 0, what would happen is you can go ahead and pay a single bill from account 0 to AWS. And that bill would consist of, would, cons would, basically, uh, would basically be, that bill would be a sum of all the amount from account 1 to account 10. So from your organization perspective, it becomes very simple for you to just do a, to just pay one invoice every month to AWS. You don't have to go and worry about paying 10 invoices or 20 invoices and so on. Of course, within your organization, you can go ahead and break down and you can see that account two uh, has uh, incurred this much money and the account four has incurred that much money. You can always see that, right? So con <coughs> always remember consolidation is only from the billing perspective right it it, it does not mean that uh, that user from one account would automatically be able to go ahead and access things in the other account doesn't happen that way okay now uh, in addition to this you may also consider uh, one particular uh, mechanism so all of you already know about im roles so it's possible that you have a user one let me let's call him admin one okay and admin one is part of account zero okay now this admin one uh, what he wants to do is he generally wants to just get into each and every account and kind of uh, do a regular check that every account is following the standards or not of course there are automated mechanisms like aws config if you want to see there's a video on aws config you can watch that so you can go ahead and use mechanisms like aws config but still sometimes manual intervention would be required right maybe in in the organization if there are security guys especially there would be a security team what they would want to do is they would want to get into every account and just want to see how people are deploying things what rules they are putting and things like that right so 
for in order to serve such scenarios what you can do is you can go ahead and create their user in one of the accounts let's say account zero in this case and you can go ahead and create im roles in account one to account 10 okay and what you can do while you are creating the im role you can go ahead and uh, write the trust relationship in such a manner that admin one from account zero would be able to assume that role. So what would happen is this guy need not remember n number of uh, credentials. What he will do is he will just log into his account zero and then he will assume role. He will, let's say he assumes role one gets into account one, role two gets into account two and he'll be able to just see everything. It, it's up to you what amount of permission do you want to give. You can go ahead and just give, give him read permission to that particular role and that should be fine right so that way it becomes very easy for him to go ahead and scan everything and uh, you know if if there are any things uh, which he finds wrong he can of course report back so uh, these are few things which you should consider uh, understand that uh, maintaining multiple accounts uh, help you and there are there are certain uh, resources for which you cannot go ahead and basically restrict things to a particular VPC. For example, if you are trying to uh, write a permission for RDS, uh, there is no uh, there is no condition available through which you can go ahead and restrict a user to a particular VPC. So which means uh, which means if you go ahead and basically you are giving certain permissions to an IM user, for example, RDS create uh, DB instance or stop or terminate or things like that, you cannot restrict uh, him to do it in a particular VPC. He'll be able to do it any of the VPCs which are available in a region. And hence, if you have such type of requirements, it's better that you go ahead and create separate account. One of the use cases for this could be that in any new organization, people, people want to give access to their uh, engineers or to their developers so that they can go ahead and try things on AWS account and basically learn stuff, right? So in such cases, uh, you cannot go ahead and give them access to, to one of the accounts where you have your uh, uh, prod instances running and things like that. So the best mechanism would be create a different sandbox AWS account, I mean, create a different AWS account, let's call it sandbox account. And in that particular account, you can give access to your engineers, developers, and people like that. And in this account, they can go ahead and, you know, try their hands and they need not uh, worry that something would go wrong, right? Because whatever actions they do would be contained in this sandbox AWS environment alone. And it cannot go ahead and affect any other AWS account or the resources running there. So that's how it works. I, I request you try and try uh, try to write few IAM policies within you, within your AWS account, and you will see that how does it all work. Okay. I hope uh, this would have helped you. I wanted to thank all of you for uh, uh, for the fact that we have reached 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Please. Uh, hit the like button if you understood what we talked in this particular video, and if you think that this is something practical, please share it with your friends as well. I thank you for continuously watching our videos and I hope to see you again very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.